peace and joy in this house. Father, we decree right now in the name of Jesus that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper in every tongue that rises against us in judgment we shall condemn for this is the heritage of those who seek your face and God you said that our righteousness is of you so God we thank you we thank you for our space our space and time even though you are eternal God you are not limited by time and space but God we thank you that even in our frail humanity you have given us this space in time that you have created God for human being because of our finiteness God, we thank you that even though we worship you in finite being, God, we know at the end of the day, Father, as we tap into heaven, we tap into the infinite, we tap into the eternal, God, we tap into the now, for you are a God that's always now, Father. God, I thank you for victory this morning. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for victory this morning. Hallelujah, God, I thank you for victory this morning. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for victory this morning. I wish somebody would open up your mouth and put your hands together and give God your own praise. I thank you for victory this morning. I thank you for victory this morning. I thank you for victory this morning. Hallelujah, I thank you. For victory this morning. I thank you for your amazing grace this morning. I thank you. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you for soundness of mind. I thank you for the full activity of my limbs. I thank you that I can open my mouth and give you praise. I thank you this morning. Hallelujah. That you've given me food on my table. I thank you that you woke me up, God. Cognizant of the fact that you are God. I thank you this morning. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. I thank you. 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 I know we like to sometimes put a praise, a limit on it. We say, give God a 30 second. Give God a one minute. Give God a two minute. But let me just say this. Just give God a praise. Hallelujah. Just give him a praise this morning. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For God inhabits the praises of his people. The Bible says, oh, that man would praise the Lord according to his excellent goodness, his greatness toward the children of men. Hallelujah. We give you praise this morning. Hallelujah. We introduce this worship with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We spread praise throughout the airways today. Hallelujah. We declare praises unto the God of all gods, the King of Kings. Hallelujah. We declare it today. Oh, we bless your name, God, for you alone are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God this morning. Hallelujah. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be in God's house this morning. You don't know what praise does. Praise causes you to forget about everything around you. Praise causes you to come into the presence of God. Praise causes you to create the atmosphere whereby God could inhabit. Praise causes you to let your enemies run in flight. Praise causes you and I to be able to dwell. Oh God, I thank you. God, oh, bless your name. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 113, we have it up there. It says, oh, so it says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. David says, I will give God a yet praise. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible tells us, awake from sleep, all ye that sleep in Zion. Awake all ye that sleep in Zion. Let the praises of God be lifted up today. Hallelujah, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I figure the world is still finding ways. The world, I, I was watching yesterday a little bit, uh, the football game between Michigan and Michigan State. And uh, even with such a big stadium, they still had folks in the stadium and they were still shouting. And, and, and even though they say in some of the sports that players are being tested and some are, are positive for the coronavirus, but yet they're still playing. They're still throwing their football. They're still uh, whatever sport they need to do. And I thought, God, the world is just, just leaving the church behind. And the world is still doing their stuff. And even more so in this season, the church ought to be able to rise. Hallelujah. And let the glory of the Lord shine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just so pleased. I'm, I'm blessed to be able to worship him. Because he's, he, we, he's the audience. That, that's the only one that we've got to please. We've just got to please him. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome into the house, the sanctuary of the Lord this morning. I trust that you and I would open ourselves up. Not only to bless God, but to receive from God all that he has for us. Amen. God is indeed worthy to be praised. If you are joining us, in fact, wherever you are joining us from today, whether it's here locally in our Bahamas or indeed around the world, somebody somebody sent me a prayer request from New York this morning. Say, would you please pray for a good friend of mine that's battling prostate cancer and wherever you're listening today, know this. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I want you to know I said a prayer even in the back of my office just for that person. Call them by name wherever you're watching around the world. Whether you're in the Caribbean, whether you well I guess they say they're not Caribbean. The Atlantic Ocean. They like to tell me whether you're in Bermuda. Hallelujah. Whether you are in the United States of America. Whether you are down there in Kenya. Uh, we I don't want to start calling names but I see all of you. I I thank you for uh, your uh, requests and I thank you for your acknowledgement. Whether you're up there in Canada, how can I forget? We welcome you to another time of worship. Not just any worship, but worship unto the King of Kings and uh, the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to remember also we send prayers out for young J. Van, one of our members here. We pray that God would touch him, uh, the Evans family. Uh, we pray for our, fam our families here locally as our worship ministry comes to uh, lead us further in song. We pray uh, God will touch you uh, in whatever it is that you need touching in, if, I, if that's good English. Whether you need a spiritual touch, whether you need a physical touch, whether you need a financial touch touch, whether you need an emotional touch, whether you need a psychological touch, whatever it is today, we pray that God's will will be done in your life. So welcome to this worship experience. We declare here at Word of Truth, John 8 and 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. All across the sanctuary as we are led by our worship ministry, Elder Edison Sumner, uh, uh, and the worship ministry here at Word of Truth Ministries. I don't know about you. We have come to worship. I, I, I want to send out condolences publicly. I started listening to him a long time ago. Bishop Ryan Allen, he's just a miracle. Anyway, y'all don't know that song. Uh, passed away into glory this morning or to sometime between yesterday and today. So we send our condolences to the family whenever you hear this. We bless God and uh, we enjoy the, the worship of Bishop Ryan Allen. Amen. 
he used to sing one of my favorite songs to uh, something. Is it something about the name Jesus? That's, that's a song. Something about the name Jesus. I don't like when he goes, eh, eh. anyway, I, 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 all that stuff, you know. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Amen. Come on, worship ministry. Just go further and deeper in God this morning. God bless you all. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. And someone declared, Bless his holy name. Let's raise our hands in the sanctuary as we welcome and we extend his presence. As the deer panteth for the waters of my extend yourselves as we sing our song after thee. Come on, let's tell him you alone sing. You alone. My heart's oh, desire, my heart's desire, and I long to worship. To worship thee. Come on, stretch out and tell her one more time. As the dear panted, sing. As the dear panted for the water, for the water so so. Now you alone are my strength and my shield. Say, you alone are my strength, are my strength, my shield. You alone, to you alone, Let my spirit heal you. Desire, desire and I long to worship you to worship you worship you come on tell him one more time say you alone are my strength you alone are my strength my shield to you alone you Praise. 
privilege and a pleasure to be in God's house, to praise him, to bless him, to fellowship in the company of his people. And you know, it's one thing to be home and to watch it and to watch TV and all of it. It's nothing like being in the house and in the presence of the Lord. And we thank God today for this opportunity, this privilege that we have to stand in this place and to give God thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. The greatness of you. I want to sing of your love and your mercy. And I want to tell everyone in this world about how great you are, the greatness of you. So I will sing of your love, Lord, and I will sing of your mercy. And I will tell the whole world of the greatness of you, Jesus. We've come into this house to lift up your name. And we lift you up in this house today, God. We lift up Jesus, we lift up your name. Oh, yes, we do say Jesus, we lift up your name. Oh, yeah. Jesus, we lift up your name. Come all together, I sing it out to him again. Oh, I want to sing of your love. You sing. I want to sing of your mercy. I want to sing of your mercy. I want to tell the whole world. I want to tell the whole world. Of the greatness of you. Of the greatness of you. So I'll sing of your love. And I'll sing of your mercy. And I'll sing of your mercy. And I'll tell the whole world. Tell the whole world of the greatness of you. 
Come on, say, Jesus, we lift. Jesus, we lift up your name. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, we lift up your name. Lift up your name. Come on, tell him again. Jesus, we lift up. Jesus, we lift up your name. What's his name? Jesus. Lord, we come, say, Lord, we come to lift you up. We give you praise. We give you praise and lift you up. In everything. Everything we lift you up. Oh, oh. your name is higher. Your name is higher than the heavens. Greater. Greater than the name. Come on, somebody declare, your name is higher. Your name is higher than the heavens. Greater. Greater than the nations. Higher. Higher than the heavens. Greater. Greater than the nations. He is higher. Higher than the heavens. Greater. Greater than the nations. Higher. Higher than the heavens. darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you Lord the course says it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath come on you sing there in our lungs. so we pour out our praise pour out our praise you sing it's our breath it's your in our lungs, so we pour out, 
pour out our praise to you, only you. Let's go back to the top one more time. You give life, you are loved. Sing. You give life, you are loved. You bring light to the darkness. You are hope. You restore. You restore every heart. Every heart that is broken. Come on, someone say, great are you. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath, say. It's your breath. In our arms. So we pour it out. So we pour, pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. It's our love. Come on, Tim. So we pour out. So we pour out our praise. Only you. Oh, 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 oh. One more time. You give a life. Sing. You, you give a life. life. You are Love. You, love. you bring light to the darkness. You bring light to the dark. You give hope. You, give hope. And you restore. You restore every heart that is broken. Every heart that, that is broken. Come on, declare it. Great are you, Lord. Say, Great are you, Lord. Come on, tell now. It's your blessing. It's your our lungs. In our lungs. Come on, so we pour out our praise. So we pour, pour out our praise. praise. We pour, pour out our praise. praise. It's your in our lungs. In our lungs. Come on, so we pour it out. Come so on. We pour, pour out our praise. praise. Pour it out. Pour it's out your praise. breath. It's your, your breath. breath. In our lungs. In our lungs. So we pour so out. We pour, pour out. out. In our lungs, so we pour so out, we pour out, out our only you, only you, only you, say, only you, only you, Lord, yeah. more time. It's only to you, Lord, only. Only you. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Great are you, Lord. 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 That's all we sing. Y'all try it. Sing, great are you. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Come on, sing it and get it to your spirit. Great. Great are you, Lord. Great. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Come on, lift up and tell him, say, Great, great are you, Lord. Oh, great, great are you, Lord. Oh, great, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. 
Come on, lift him up in the house. Great, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, great, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Come on, declare one more time. Great. One time all together sing. I lift my hand, I lift my hand, hand to, give to give you glory. I lift my voice, I lift my voice to sing your praise. To sing your praise with every breath. With every breath oh, that I am. Oh, that I am. I'm gonna praise you. I'm gonna praise you. you. Come on, one more time all together. I lift my head, I lift my head to give you glory. I lift my voice to sing your praise. To sing your praise yeah. with every breath. With every breath. Oh, that I Come on, let's all testify together and sing it again. I lift my head to give you glory. I lift my voice to sing your praise with every breath. Are you Lord? Come on, one more time. Declare great, great, great are you, Lord. Oh, great, great, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. He is great, great are you, Lord. Oh. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, great, great are you, Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord.
Jehovah there is no one greater than the I am there is no one greater than Yahweh there is no one greater than the El Shaddai there is no one greater than Elohim the creator God there is no one greater than El Elyon God Almighty the great God there is no one greater he is the true and the living God and that's why we come to pay homage today and every day as we live our lives we recognize that it's all about him amen great are you Lord hallelujah you may be seated in the sanctuary this morning hallelujah great are you Lord Jesus hallelujah great are you Lord Jesus Great are you, Lord Jesus. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I just, can I just sing one time in memory of Bishop Brands? Can I just sing the Jesus song? Hallelujah. Can I just sing the the Jesus song, there's something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Amen. Hallelujah. Something about the name Jesus. Hallelujah. Something about the name Jesus. It is. It is the sweetest his name I know something about the name Jesus something about the name Jesus it is the sweetest name I know Oh, how I love the name Jesus. And the reason why. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, I love. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. just the name Jesus but the person Jesus amen the God of glory amen hallelujah thank you so very much worship ministry hallelujah oh it is the sweetest name hallelujah how I love him 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 hallelujah he is not it is for me he is the sweetest name I know. Amen. Amen. We're in worship unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you. Our worship ministry and El Dedis and El Kever and Sister Monique and those that are singing in worship today. We bless God for you. Amen. We thank God for our minstrel that's here today. It's something about having some keys tinkling 
as you sing a song. I mean, we can sing without it, uh, but, but it's always good to add some special flavor. Amen. Hallelujah. Some special flavor. Amen. It's like if you're here locally, it's like conch salad. Whatever ingredients you put in conch salad, if you don't put a little bit of pepper, it just don't taste right, you know? And uh, we just thank God. Boy, I better keep in the spirit because I sure was thinking about some conch salad yesterday. Praise Jesus. Amen. God is so good. And I love him this morning. I thank him for this opportunity that we have to be in the house of God. And for all of you that made the investment to be here this morning, we bless God for you. For those of you who are making the investment to be wherever you are today, worshiping with us, whether you are in your car, your home, your hotel room, maybe some of y'all got some yachts and some planes, whatever it is, we bless God for you this morning. Amen? And we thank him. Amen. Hallelujah. I always love to pray. I know I got word to go into, but I said his name briefly. That's my godson. I call him a miracle child. But I want to pray one more time for Sister Hope also. Her mother. Yes. We want, that's why we want to remember uh, Mama Riley. Hope we're calling uh, Mama Riley's name uh, before God today. We want to remember uh, Mama Major. We want to continuously keep her in prayer. I know I'm a major. I miss your smile. Amen. We want to remember uh, Elder uh, Ruth and, and Deacon Elect Keith. Amen. We want to remember them calling their names before God in prayer. Uh, we want to continue to remember Mama Williamson that God would continually uh, bring healing completely to her body. And, and even though uh, uh, Elder Edison um, was up here singing. We want to continue to remember his family as he uh, buried uh, their father just about, what was it, two weeks ago? Last week. And, and uh, he said to me, Bishop, I'm going to be in church this week. This is the first Sunday in November. And life, with all the pain, life continues and we've got the strength of God to keep us. Amen? I, I want to rem I want to it struck me hard. I want to pray for both families. I want to pray for the policeman's family. I want to pray for the guy that got shot uh, there in Exuma. I thought, I, I felt that. I was like, God, help us as a nation. Help us to deal with uh, the, the challenges um, that we are facing in our nation. And many of you know, my wife is from Bermuda and, and they're having some Challenges there with young people, just uh, violence in some ways and stabbings and shootings. And there's people just can't handle conflict in our world. And, and we see what's happening whenever things get even tighter. The, one of the first, in fact, the place that the enemy attacks the most is the church. Uh, you see that fanatic there in, in Lyon, France, and Nice, France the other day. I mean, I thought how gruesome to behead somebody. I'm not, you know, I, I can't even imagine uh, the sight just because uh, they don't agree with your false religion. I mean, you're not even serving the true and the living God. But this is because of sin in our world. And this is what's happening when you see the, 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 the violence and the vileness of humankind. But in the midst of it all, there is a God who is in control. His name is Jehovah. And God counteracts the violence with love and peace and joy. And so I want to pray today. I want to pray that God will always prevail in his creation. As we have called those names already, God knows them by name. And you, you know, we used to say back in the day when you have a prayer request and you don't want to make it known, but in accordance with the word of God, you just raise your hands. Anybody got a prayer request and you say, Preacher, would you pray for me that God would touch me all across the sanctuary today? Amen. All of us got needs. Look at what the word of God declares. It says, God shall supply all our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. 
would you just take this moment with me to pray. Father, I thank you once again for the opportunity that we have to call on you one more time. You said unto us that we ought to call unto you and you will answer us and you will show us great and mighty things that we have that we know not of. God, you also told us that we ought to be careful to be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. We ought to make our requests known unto you. So God, you know the names that I've called already. God, you know every hand that's been raised in this sanctuary and possibly there's some outside the sanctuary who raised their hands in faith. God, in accordance with with your word let your will which is perfect be done in all of our lives today those that need healing in whatever area of their lives those who need deliverance those who just need a friend to stick closer than a brother those who need wisdom and discernment those who need just to have somebody that they can talk to whatever the need is today God Father, we come asking, we come asking in faith, oh God, do in our lives what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, sweet hour, sweet hour, sweet hour, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Feel the soothing of God in your spirit even now. God, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We honor you. We praise you. I believe God. The Bible talks about the immutability of God. Simply a big word that means the unchangingness of God. God never changes in that, in that's who he is. His character. His makeup. He's still God. He's in control. He still has all power and authority. The Bible talks about the unfailingness of God. God never fails. No matter how life may seem to be treacherous, God never fails. The Bible talks about the truth of God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God cannot lie. Whatever God says, that's what God is going to to do. Amen? And so I bless God for the opportunity that we have to be in his house today. I wish to go into the word of God this morning to share afresh that which God has laid on my heart reading from the book of Isaiah. Some call him the blue-blooded prophet prophet of royalty as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, the word of God, known as the major prophet, one of the major prophets of the Bible, who wrote so profoundly about things not only in the eternal past, but things in the eternal future, even though we had not seen them as yet, but because of the inspiration of God, he wrote as God's Holy Spirit inspired him. So, Father, now I need you. I need you to speak to me afresh. Not only to me, but God, I need you to speak through me to this people that are in this house and those who are listening by means of media. Father, I declare back to you that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that which you have purposed and it will prosper in the thing whereby you sent it. So I thank you today. I thank you that your word which is light and life. I thank you that your word will change us. 
as we submit ourselves to you. So God, now let your kingdom come. Hallelujah. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We'll be careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As it is our tradition, would you stand with us? It is a good tradition. It is to honor the king of glory. The book of Isaiah chapter 53 verses 1 through 5. In fact, I like to read together because, as I always say, faith, belief in God that he is cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're going to read this together. If you're at home, you can get your Bible and read aloud too uh, with us. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 through 5. Shall we read this together? This morning, please. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall go up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were. Uh-huh. And rejected. He hath borne. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Smitten of God. And afflicted. I read that in context because this is the verse that I want to deal with today. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. God's word is blessed and we declare amen. So let it be. You may be seated in his presence today. A few weeks ago, I dealt with a message talking about, it's still about the cross. And God impressed upon me to dig a little bit further, not so much the cross, but the one who was on the cross. And here is the thought that he brought into my memory. Simply this, the blood of Jesus still works. The blood of Jesus still works. The Bible is not for everybody. That may seem strange. The Bible basically is for believers. Because in order for the Bible to be effective in your life, you've got to believe it and believe what it says. You see, the Bible tells us that 
the way that those who do not receive the Bible, even though the heavens declare the glory of God, there is natural revelation. But he says that the preaching of the gospel is how men are drawn to Jesus Christ. It is how men understand what the Bible says. Emory Bancroft, in his book, Elemental Theology, writes it this way. The Bible is God the creator disclosing the truth about himself to mankind. He goes on to say a bit further, it is the demonstration and the sharing by God of his person, his will, and his redemptive activity that's why the blood of Jesus still works he goes on to say this activity is progressive in both its revelatory and redemptive facets culminating in the incarnation of his son Jesus Christ coming to this earth to die for humankind that, that, that's the whole impetus of what the Bible is all about. It is God revealing himself to his creation and everything points to God. That's why the atheist can't believe the Bible because the atheist makes the uh, presumption that they are omniscient. In other words, they know all things so therefore they are God unto themselves but they've got another thing coming that's why the agnostic can't believe the bible because the agnostic says that i believe in knowledge and so if it is not in knowledge and reasoning then it doesn't make sense what humanity doesn't understand is that god is transcending god goes outside of human knowledge god goes outside of human capacity and god God reveals himself as God. Isn't it amazing that that which God provided, I'm going somewhere, the blood of Jesus Christ, that which God provided to bring life into this world is the same thing that the enemy has used to make man believe in the goriness and the, the horribleness of the blood. That's because they don't understand that the blood of Jesus Christ provides life to humanity. Sin has made the blood seem gory. Sin has made the blood seem as though it should not be accepted. Sin, the disobedience unto man, unto God, because of, uh, uh, unto God by man. The rebellion of man against God has caused that which God has provided to bring life to humanity. We look at it in a strange way because we don't believe his word. God has ways to reveal himself that doesn't match up with human logic. I'm, I'm going somewhere. How can blood, how, how can blood, how can, can blood cause a man to be changed and transformed? Not just any blood, but the blood of the creator of this universe. God provided himself and this blood can transform humanity. Those who were down in the dumps and those who were dead can come back to life and those who are messed up and rejected can walk with hope and can walk with the assurance it's because the blood of Jesus Christ is outside of human reasoning it provides power to those that need it from God amen so God gives us examples he gives us examples that leads up to his blood being shed on Calvary's old rugged cross 
Because you got to understand this, this gospel, this religion, this, this relationship with God is a bloody religion. I know that's a word that the English don't like to use too much, but you got to understand this blood, this relationship with God is a bloody relationship. It, it was paid by his own blood on Calvary's old rugged cross. Calvary is one thing, the cross is one thing, but he who hung on the cross, it's another thing. I said to God, God, I said, God, what are you saying in this text? He says, Lester, I want you to first tell the people of God that the blood of Jesus Christ still works because it provides life. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, I had to be beaten like I was beaten. I had to be crucified like I was crucified. I had to be tortured like I was tortured because the blood that was inside of me had to flow out of me. And every flow of God's blood that flowed down from Calvary's Oh, rugged cross providing life can you hear it now can you hear it as it seeps into the ground it said I'm providing you life so that in 2020 those who are dead in trespasses and sin when they receive the blood and the power of God it will transform our lives around it is the blood the blood the blood we don't like to talk too much about the blood because the world, in fact, not the world, forget about the world a little bit. The church still thinks that the blood is a gory thing. We don't like to talk about the blood of Jesus Christ because we think it's not relevant in today's world. Well, my friends, in order for you and I to be changed, we got to talk about it. We got to receive it. We got to allow the blood to overflow our lives. We got to allow the blood of Jesus Christ to cause us to be better. So we've got to receive him in faith the blood of Jesus Christ still works how do I know that because his word says so let me go a bit further the key the key to accepting this fact is how we view scripture if you view scripture accepting it as God's word then you receive Whatever scripture says as truth. I, I want to say that again. Because we are living in a very, we are living in a world that relies on reasoning. We are living in a world that relies on man's ingenuity. We, we are living in a world that relies on man making himself God. We are living in a world where man believes that he has the answers to the problems that we face. But when we read the word of God, we recognize that man, humanity, we are God's creation and we are controlled. In fact, this creation is controlled by a being that is outside of us and that being is God. God says, how do you know? That I'm God. Look at what it says. How do you know? A uh, Second Timothy. Let me go there for a moment. Second Timothy, uh, chapter two. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. Second Timothy, uh, chapter three. Sorry, verse sixteen and seventeen says what? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Here it is for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect and complete and mature and truly furnished unto all good works. You got to understand when the prophet Isaiah wrote his name by the way means salvation of the Lord he deals with a variety of themes but he always comes back to the fact that the gospel is about Jesus Christ and then God gave us examples leading up to this blood you see God placed man in the garden of Eden and God placed him in perfection Adam and Eve you know the story in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 that's why I smile when people say things like they are trying to say 
gave life. Only God is the giver of life. It says in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, you see life is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17, I'm going somewhere. God says in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, and God formed the man out of the dust of the ground, and God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. You got to understand there is life in the blood. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to talk about the blood of Jesus Christ. There is life in the blood. I'm not just talking about physical life. There is a connection. There is a spiritual life that's in the blood of Jesus Christ that when it flows down into our spirit, everything that is contrary in our life has to dissipate. Why? Because Jesus is Lord and ruler of our life. It is God who is the life giver because of his blood. The Bible says, look at how God gave us a prelude to this blood. The Bible gives us an example of the sacrificial uh, offering of himself that was coming uh, uh, in the New Testament. The Bible says uh, in the book of Genesis also that when Adam and Eve rebelled, I keep trying to find out. In fact, in my human mind, I can because I can never understand perfection and neither can you. I keep trying to figure out God with all the perfection that Adam and Eve had in the Garden of Eden. Yet because of one, uh, um, rece not receiving, because of one taking on of the voice that was other than God. They listened to a voice that was other than God and Satan caused sin to come into this world. So what happened preacher when sin came into this world disobedience from God man automatically died not just physically he didn't die physically first of all he died spiritually the connection with God was broken because of sin so Jesus came on Calvary the blood still works Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed what is God talking about when the blood flowed not just physical life but spiritual life was restored because we rebelled against God but the blood of Jesus still works because the blood brought us back to a God of grace and mercy that's the reason why we ought to declare that the blood of Jesus still works because it provides life life is more than just your physical being the Bible gives a sacrificial aspect of blood before Jesus came. He talked about Adam and Eve being covered, covered by God with animal skins. And then God says, look at the power of the blood. He goes on a bit further uh, in Exodus and he says to the children of Israel, he says, when you're about to leave Egypt, he says, you got to kill an animal. There's the sacrifice. It's a prelude. You've got to kill an animal. You've got to kill a lamb. And here's what you do. You've got to put the blood over the doorpost. See, sin will try to make you believe that that's gory. That's the reason why people don't like to look at blood. But what they don't understand is the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not about the gory. It's the blood. It's literally about life. But sin has warped her. What is the definition of the blood of Jesus Christ? And God God says when I see the blood I will pass over you what was happening y'all death was to pass through Egypt and the firstborn was about to be killed but when you have the blood of Jesus Christ over your life even though death may pass by because the blood of Jesus is life I declare that you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord there is power and life in the blood then God gives us a further prelude talks about the children of Israel and then he goes a bit further in the book of Leviticus and he gives an example Leviticus uh, chapter 17 and he says to Moses he says tell Aaron I'm going to give him a tradition that's going to lead up to my coming it's called the Day of Atonement. Look at how serious this was. We know it today. The Jewish race call it Yom Kippur. In fact, they uh, celebrated, I think, just a little while in September.
September ago, Yom Kippur, the priest, it was so serious that the high priest, not just any priest, the high priest could only go into the Holy of Holies once a year. And he had to make sure that he was clean himself. The Bible says that the high priest had to take an animal, making sure that it was pure. I'm going to get to that next point, y'all. The blood represents the purity of God. And the Bible says he had to make sure that it was pure and then he would take the blood and he would go into the holy of holies and he would sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat that means everything that was dead in Israel when the high priest sprinkled the blood it rose back to life again I declare prophetically over your life that when you allow the blood of Jesus Christ that flowed down from Calvary when you allow it to consume your life I declare prophetically by the authority of the word of God that every dead thing in your life shall live again because the blood has the power and the authority to give you life I'm smiling I'm smiling I'm smiling at the world because the world is speaking death and God has been saying to me, Lester, you speak life, speak life. I want to tell somebody today, I don't care how mad or how bad your situation is. I choose to believe God's word. And if the blood represents life, I know people are trying to find solutions. But here's what I'm praying for you all. I'm praying, God, you are a miracle worker. You are still able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. God, we don't need some vaccine that may be all well and good but what we need God is a miracle of life we need you to come down and invade human space you don't hear too much preachers preaching you don't hear the world asking about a miracle forget the world for a little bit because they don't know any better but you don't hear too much church folks even asking for a miracle but throughout all of this I've been declaring God we still need a miracle it's going to take a miracle for life to flow in this dead situation and this miracle can only happen when God is revealed it ain't gonna take no scientific knowledge y'all it's gonna take a miracle what's a miracle when the supernatural power of God invades the natural human space the, the, we, we need a miracle to release this world even from fear. Okay, let me come closer home. I'm in, I'm in the text. We need a miracle even to release some church folks from fear. Because if I said at the very beginning, if the Bible is the divine word of God and we receive this Bible as the divine word of God, then 2 Timothy 1.7 tells me that God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So you're praying? The blood still works? Pray. That the blood provides a miracle of life. I know man's trying. And we try. Yeah, but we ain't got to answer y'all. God comes and brings humanity to a point. To make us realize. That there is a greater power than us. See, and until we get it then we'll keep going around in circles until we get it we will always live in fear the blood of Jesus still works and the first thing God says to me he says my blood is a life giving flow Not only is the blood a life-giving flow, but the blood of Jesus. You've got to understand, the blood of Jesus 
What did it do? Gave us freedom and release from sin and the law and transgression and iniquity. That's a whole lot of me, but let me just give it to you. He was wounded for our transgressions. Every disobedience, every breaking of the command of God, God says the blood of Jesus Christ provided for humanity. And then he says it was bruised for our iniquity. Every intentional sin, that's what iniquity is. You know it's wrong. But yet, you and I still do it. He was bruised for our iniquity. God paid a price. As I studied this text, and I thought that's why the Bible says in the very beginning, the verses before, says he was despised and rejected of men, a man acquainted with sorrow and grief. And the Bible says what? That when they looked at him, his body was uncomely. Why? Because man thought it was bad. What they didn't know, it was a setup for a comeback. Hallelujah. What they didn't know is the more the blood flowed, the more it would touch the life of humanity. What they didn't know was in 2020, the blood of Jesus Christ is still as potent today as it was back then. We say in theological terms, we say the efficacy of the blood. What does it mean? It simply means the strength and the power of the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ has the opportunity and the ability to turn a crazy man seen. The blood of Jesus Christ can make us sick man whole. The blood of Jesus Christ can turn your problems and make it a stepping stone so that you can walk into glory. The blood of Jesus Christ can help you to deal with your enemies, to bless them that persecute you. The blood of Jesus Christ can cause you to declare that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The blood of Jesus Christ can cause you to declare in faith that even though there's no food in your cupboard that you can still declare and my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus you don't have no money in your pocket oh don't worry about it God can send somebody to bless you just to prove to you that it is God it's only because of the blood of Jesus Christ that's why I serve him. That's why I still believe in him. If you, look here, look here. I'm a student of the news. And uh, I was, in my former life, I wanted to work in the United Nations to be what I called a world politician, diplomat. And so even now, I still go and I read on various things that's happening around the world. And just yesterday, I said, let me go and Google and see what's happening in China. But the daddy, you know what China is doing? China is planning economic growth for the next 15 years. You know what I'm saying? The, the president or prime minister of China, who is more and more, he's garnering power to himself so that he can be like Mao, you know, the communist Chinese leader back in the day. In other words, he has no opposition because every opposition that arises, he stuffles it down. China, where this virus started, while the world is fluttering and walking all around wondering what they're going to do, China is in economic growth, has turned the corner, and they are planning for the next 15 
years when people started talking bishop you sure you know what you're saying I said I know what God heard what I heard from God and God is not going to allow an evil nation to cause this world to be as it is without God stepping in and so God spoke into my spirit so strongly he says Lester you ain't going out like this the church ain't going out like this the blood of Jesus Christ is going to turn some things around because God is in control Erdogan who is the president of Turkey was making noise because he says that friends should not be speaking against the Muslim religion. They're boycotting all the French products in Turkey. Well, God decided, I'm going to send a 7.8, I think it was a 7.2 earthquake. And now the focus has switched in Turkey just trying to survive. Because an earthquake has hit Turkey. People are dead. Buildings have collapsed. Economy is collapsing. And, and, and see, when man tries to think. Oh, go there, go there, go there, Lester. There is a story in the Bible about a king named Nebuchadnezzar. And the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar made a statue and Nebuchadnezzar thought he was God. And then he got a dream one day and the dream he couldn't understand. The Bible says he called on the prophet Daniel. He said, Daniel, what does this dream mean? Daniel said, King Nebuchadnezzar, you thought you were God. But let me tell you what the real God says. He says for seven winters. In other words, God was merciful even in the midst of it because God has a greater purpose. He said for seven winters, y'all, Nebuchadnezzar, you're going to crawl. You're going to crawl and eat grass. Your, your fingernails are going to be like eagle's claws. Your hair on your back is going to be like eagle's, eagle's feathers. In other words, Daniel said, Nebuchadnezzar, God's going to cause you to go crazy for seven years just to help you to recognize that he is God. What I like about the story is this. When Nebuchadnezzar came to himself in the book of Daniel, the Bible says, and Nebuchadnezzar declared, he is the great God of Zion. There is no God like Jehovah God. What is the real purpose of the blood? To help man to recognize that there is no God like Jehovah God. He is the true and the living God. And there is none beside him. He has all power and authority. And he will do what he wants to do. Because at the end of the day, it's his purpose that's being fulfilled. That's why I tell folks, you better not play with the true and the living God. Because God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come back to testify but he struck Pharaoh or Herod down Pharaoh, was it Pharaoh down in one soup the Bible says and when, when Herod I think it's Herod let me get it right Herod Antipas said I'm God the Bible says and he, he struck him down dead and the worms ate his body on the spot see I don't think we realize as humanity the power and the authority of the one who has created us. Even in death, the blood still speaks. Because God can hear because he's the giver of life. How do I know that? Genesis chapter 4, verse 10. And God came down, in fact it says, and came talked with his brother Abel. These two brothers now, they walk in along having a conversation all along. Cain's plotting in his heart. And the Bible says that Cain slew his brother Abel. The Bible never says 
where Abel was buried. But the Bible says that uh, God came down. God knew where he was. God came down and asked Cain the question. Cain, where is thy brother Abel? Look at the audacity of humanity. Cain said to God, am I my brother's keeper? Do, do we, do, does this world really know? That's why uh, uh, verse 1 of uh, Isaiah chapter 53, the world really doesn't know. It says, who hath believed our report? Jesus in John picks up the same message. He says, though I would come down in the flesh, yet man still will deny that I am the true and the living God. He says, Cain, where is thy brother Abel? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Now, I told you in Genesis chapter 2, in fact, the Bible tells you that God formed the man from the dust of the earth and God breathed into man the breath of life. That tells me that only God is the giver and the taker of life. Not only the giver, he is the giver, the sustainer, and the taker of life. Cain says, am I my brother's keeper? And God said to him, Cain, don't play with me, my translation he says, thy brother's blood cries out from the earth. See, see, we may think, we may think, you got to understand, everything that happens to God happens in the now. Man goes by time. God only made time because of man. God is not limited by time. God is outside of time. That's why if you go back to yesterday, to God, it will still be now. If you come to today, to God, it will still be now. If you go to tomorrow, to God, it will still be now. How do you know that preacher? A thousand years is but a day. And a day like a thousand years in the sight of God. God said to Cain, God says Cain thy brother's blood crieth out to me from the ground in other words Cain who gave you the audacity to take life when you didn't give it in the first place then Cain says in verse 10 there about God I've sinned a great sin and man's gonna kill me and God says, no, Cain. He said, I'm going to put a mark on you. The Bible says, and Cain went to the land of Nod. There he lived. <laughs> you got to understand, y'all. See, see, man's got to understand. And God, even though I get through this one point, man's got to understand that God is the source of life. Let me say this, and I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be rude, but I gotta tell you the truth. Let me talk to every politician, every government leader, whether you're here in the Bahamas or wherever you are, you cannot save life unless God saves it. Hear what I'm saying? I'm not right, look here. You cannot save life unless God saves it. Because my Bible tells me, as cold as it may sound, here's the reality. Yes, in our human flesh, we miss when people die. I was just telling someone, my parents have been dead now 13 and 10 years ago. I still miss them. But here's the reality. He, uh, Hebrews 9, 27. It is appointed. That's what it says. God didn't say how you're going to die. And he didn't say when you're going to die. But he says... There is an appointment that you and I can dock. It doesn't matter who you know. The giver of life says, it is appointed unto man. Once to die. And here is the key to it all. And after death. Oh, you think you're just going to die? Eh? Oh, like my grandma used to say, uh-huh. And after death, the judgment, God who is the creator and the sustainer of life and the blood that flowed from Calvary, God 
gave, uh, the Bible talks about in the theological term, about the word atonement. All atonement is, is that God covers us. He covers our nakedness and our sin. And so what he sees is not us. He sees the blood of Jesus Christ that covers us. But there is coming a day when man has got to give an account for this blood that flowed from Calvary. The blood of Jesus Christ provides life it provides freedom from transgression, iniquity, and sin. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, 20, 20, 22, 9, 22, he says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. You know what remission means? It means to pull back as though it was never there. That's what it means. When somebody is in remission, it means the sickness that they have is no longer in control at the moment. They're living a regular life. Without the shedding of blood. That's the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no remission. Doesn't matter what man says. We've got to understand that the blood of Jesus Christ still works today. The blood of Jesus Christ can change your life around. But you've got to receive it and come under the flow. Can I give you one more point? Not only does the blood of Jesus Christ provide life. Not only does the blood of Jesus Christ provide freedom from transgression and sin and release from sin and the law, but the blood of Jesus Christ gives us peace. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. God knows, I, 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 look at our, I look at our world, and especially in my country today. And you know one of the reasons I pray for the prime minister? I pray God just give him wisdom. I see the retailers complaining. <laughs> I, I, see, I, I, I see the hotel workers, they got issues. I, I see the whoever else workers, and mind you, they are legitimate issues because people's got to live. <laughs> so what do you do? When at the end of the day, you say as well, we got to shut down to save lives. But folks ain't got no food to eat. <laughs> you see why you got to pray? The Bible says don't talk about leadership. Say pray for them. Pray for them that God give them wisdom. And here's what I pray. I pray God save them who ain't saved. So that they who make decisions can make decisions with a mind of righteousness. Y'all read locally here in Bahamas? So they say 20,000 people affected the retail industry. Thousands affected the hotel industry. Thousands, who knows the amount, whether it's taxi cab drivers, whether it's Arawaki, uh, whether it's Potter's Key Dog, who knows, whether it's the man on the side of the street selling coconut water. The world is not only in a health crisis, the world is in an economic crisis. Man is trying to find solutions. I said earlier, for some of you that weren't here when we were praying earlier, uh, you know, Europe is trying all it can to find solutions. Boris Johnson said, well, we're going to lock down parts of London and do this, etc. And France says, we're going to lock down part of France. But France says, no, no, we ain't going to lock down everything because we got to leave some schools open. And then France says, you know, we like our sports. So uh, if we can't lock down sports, sporting events still going on. The world is trying to find solutions to 
the problems we face. And the answer is right there staring us in the face. The answer is in God. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. You can imagine if everyone would turn to God with righteous indignation and call and say, God save us. God gives an example. The nation of Israel is chosen people. Whenever they sinned, in fact, they said, the Bible says between, when you look between the last book of the Bible in Malachi and Matthew, it seemed as though there was 400 years of silence and there was no word that was relevant or prevalent in that day. Why? Because of the sin of humanity. This world is in a sinful state, including some in the church. Hello, lights. I'm talking about the blood still works. God said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace. What do we need in this world today? We need the peace of God. You know how much people are fretting right now? Folks who used to shout and speak in tongues and ain't trusting God. Whenever my mind starts to get a bit uh, contrary, God reminds me, Lester, just trust me. And that may seem simple, but I declare right now to those of you that are in this house and those who are listening, just trust God. What does that mean? Just rely on him. It means just allow him to work in your situation no matter how dire the situation is. I said China is planning for the next 15 years. China's economy has just uh, reported a positive growth in the midst of a pandemic where it started. Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives it, give I unto you. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can keep us in peace. And peace doesn't mean you don't have challenges. It just means you know how to operate in the challenges because you rely on God. That, that's why the Bible, the, the world thinks the church is crazy. But let me say this. The church, we are the only ones that's keeping the wrath of God from coming in this world in its full force. The blood of Jesus still works. Finally, the blood of Jesus gives us healing and wholeness. That's a whole other story right there. We need racial healing. We need spiritual healing. I ain't talking Marvin Gaye now. We need spiritual healing, real spiritual healing. We need financial healing. We need justice. Forget America and the rest of the world right here. We need healing. We need, we just need people to be human. I, I know in our neighbors to the north, and God just reminded me, he says, Lester, he says, he says chill out, I'm in control. Because I hate to believe the tension in America, no matter who wins. There are literally men in America calling themselves militias who are walking around with guns saying they're helping the police to keep law and order. 
And America got some things called open carry where you can carry whatever machine gun you want open and wide. This is the world in which we're living and we need peace. Belarus, that's former Soviet Union. Uh, the leader there, Lashenko, whatever his name is. Anybody that rises up in rebellion, he has crushed them violently sometimes. Leaders in our world today are concerned with one thing, especially if they don't know God. They are concerned with power. Somebody said power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. It was it Abe Lincoln? I don't remember who it was. So we, we're living in a world where they, we need peace. We just need peace just to go outside. Because if we're not careful, if we're not careful, this world system can condition the mind of humanity to make us believe that life is not going to get better. But the devil is a lie. In Revelation chapter 12 and 11 thereabouts, here is the final victory of the blood. The Bible says, and I saw a great number standing before the throne who had overcome the devil Satan who was the accuser of the brethren standing before God day and night. And the Bible says, and they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You don't think the blood of Jesus is powerful? You don't think the blood of Jesus, if the blood of Jesus is in eternity, you don't think we need his blood for now? The blood of Jesus, it still works. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Maybe I'll deal a bit deeper next week with the healing part. We need some healing, y'all. We need healing in our lives, in our families, in our communities, and in our world. The blood of Jesus, it still works. Would you put your hands together in the house and give him praise? <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory to God. This is a bloody salvation. It's a bloody salvation. But every drop of blood brings a soul into the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to pray with us before we leave you today. That we will allow Jesus. That we will allow his blood to flow. The blood that gives me strength. That's what it does. From day to day. It will never. It will never lose. Never lose its power. His power. She's going to sing it one more time oh, before I blood. pray. me strength from day from day to day it will never it will never lose its power, its power. can you sing that part that it reaches for it reaches oh, for it reaches to the highest to the And it flows to the lowest, to the lowest valley. valley. Oh, the blood, the blood that gives me strength, gives me strength from, from day, day to day. day. It 
will never. It will never lose its power. As they play and sing softly, I want to remind you today. If you are a child of God, first of all, I want to remind you. This Bible is the illuminated and inspired and divine word of God. Look at God. This Bible, written by 66 books, written by 44 authors, over a span of 1,500 years, yet it is unified in declaring truth, pointing to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you are a non-believer today, it is the word that is preached from this Bible by this preacher that convicts your heart. Or preachers around the world that convicts your heart. Don't deny it. Because here's what the word says. The preaching of the gospel is to them that perish. Foolishness. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. You want to have life? Life can only happen when you have Jesus Christ. And so I want to pray today as we leave you in this worship experience. But God never leaves us. I want to pray for you, whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance. If we would just trust God. God will still do exceeding abundantly in our lives above all that we can ever ask or think. Would you believe in faith? Not so much in this preacher, not so much even in the words that I speak, but so much believing in God, the creator of everything. Would you pray with us now, Father? In the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word that you have allowed me to share. Reminding all of us that the blood of Jesus Christ still works today and will work, God, as long as there is humankind on this earth and as long as you allow this earth to be in existence. God, the only way that we can come to you is through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. So, Father, right now I pray for saint and sinner those that are confessing you as Lord and Savior, may they take another look at this word and believe this word afresh for themselves. Allowing the power of Jesus Christ to work in their lives. And for those that don't know you as Lord and Savior, God, may the word convict them that they will turn to you and receive the word for themselves. Touch the lost and dying. Touch the hurt, touch the wounded, touch the oppressed and, the, and de the depressed. Thank you at the end of the day that we can declare your word, Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Thank you for hearing us, God. Thank you for answering us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We bless God for you. We pray that the word speaks to you, that your life will be transformed, your mind be renewed. Again, we're coming to you from Word of Truth Ministries International. Located in beautiful Nassau, the Bahamas. I'm Bishop Lester M. Cox, senior pastor here at Word of Truth, a people that's on a collision course with destiny. And that destiny is Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, write to us, email us, whatever you've got to do. Our information is there on the screen. You can look at our website. You can go to our various social media platforms and send me your prayer request. Send us your prayer requests. You can call into the office. If we're not here, you can leave a message. Also, we want you to be blessed of God. And then we want to encourage you, God, one of the requirements that God, or one of the things that God says that we ought to be givers. We ought to 
plant seed, give an offering on our tithes, and we ought to do it into good ground. I want to encourage you, if you feel impressed of God to plant a seed, to give an offering, to give a tithe into this ministry, you can go to our website. You can see our various giving platforms. And you can go there and you can give unto the Lord so that the work of the kingdom can progress. So once again, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We'll see you until next time. God bless you.